My dream would be for the economic and political independence of black people. There you go. Let me give you. Let me give you an example. There you go. Let me give you an example. You got to kill My dream would be. Yeah, but no, that'll no, be no, your no, dream. You no, you, you got to kill you, no, you for that. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna give you an example. Let me give you an example. Um, World War Two. United States dropped two atomic bombs, one in Nagasaki and one in Hiroshima. Decimated Japan. Japan threw their hands up and said, all right, all right, I quit. I'm sorry, because they attacked Pearl Harbor. So then they turned around and dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. Japan said, fuck it, I quit. You know, and at the time, Japan was a world power. United States now said, okay, boom. Put military bases on your property in your country. Now, the United States got a military presence in Japan. My point is, today, Japan owns more than ten percent of this country. They came back and they they sit at the table with the United States making world decisions, and they came back from the devastation. When I say devastation, you understand the devastation, and anybody who don't know. Look it up. Look up Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and its effects on Japan's people, economy, culture, all that. You, you can go on Google and look that up and read up about it and see how the J Japanese people were crushed. They bounced back. What they did, they had a national agenda. Japan now owns more than 10% of the wealth of this country. And for one nation to control that, that is a lot. And Not only this country, without Africa too. A really. lot of different countries. I'm just talking about United States. And they did it without firing a shot. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So Brother Larry is shaking his head no. The the reason, reason, no, Larry. that's not I'm not shaking my head no, right? Um and I accept the example, however, I, I feel I only feel it's necessary to point out to you, right, that you cannot juxtapose Japan in 1945 and the devastation of two Japanese cities, two Japanese cities with black people in the diaspora and I'm talking about black people in the United States, I'm not talking yeah, about people in the diaspora. Well, it's well the diaspora States includes diaspora. the world. Yeah, well, it's part well, of the diaspora. Listen, hold on, and you're talking about a country that's what? big as California. Okay, but time right? out. Time right? out. Remember no, that. You're talking about islands. So you say two cities. You're talking about islands. Yeah, right, look, you're talking about two cities in a total country that's the size of California. Go ahead. Now, they killed like 200,000 Japanese. No, more than that. Come on, baby. No, it's more than 200,000. No, it was more than. Okay, but well, 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 let's not let's not bog down the trivia out there, right? My point is, my larger point is that the difference in the structure of a country with the ability to have a national identity, right? And black people here without the ability to have a national identity. Why? Why we don't have the ability to have a national identity? Uh, okay. That's a different conversation, but let's have it. Oh, no, but let's, that's, that's, let's, that's 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 germane to the point. Yeah, yeah. That's let's, germane let's, to let's, the point. Let's have it. Let's Let me ask it. you this. Do the Koreans have a national identity? Yeah. Alright. Do Italians have a national identity? Yeah. Alright. Now, do do black people in America have a national identity? No, they identity? don't. Now, you the said reason, the ability the, to. The, what I'm saying to you, brother, yeah. what I'm saying to you, brother, yeah. is my larger point in that context uh -huh. is that coming out of the darker period of oppression of black people in this country, right? right black people kind of scattered. And for the most part, when they scattered, they never communicated with the scattered parts. Some ran to Detroit. Some ran, some never left. They stayed in Ground Zero, down in the South, uh -huh. right, or wherever it was, Alabama, Texas, what have you, right. Some ran to New York. Some ran out of the country to Canada, right. And they actually be in Canada. They call themselves French Canadians. Um, in some parts of the country, they look like us and call themselves Indians. In some parts of the country, they call themselves African Americans. In some parts of the country, we call ourselves Black. In some parts of the country, they still refer to themselves as Negro. You understand? So we have never had this conversation where we came together as a people 
Of course yes, we, we did. When? Jesse what did Jackson. Marcus Garvey say? And what, did, what did Marcus Garvey say? Where was Marcus Garvey at? Yo, because Marcus Garvey had over 2 million members. He was worldwide. What I'm trying to get no, you to say, yeah, hold up, hold up, Larry. Right. Listen, Larry, Go you ahead. said we never had the conversation. We did have the conversation. Not only, not only. What did Elijah yes. Muhammad say? Uh -oh. Elijah Muhammad had the conversation. Help See, up. understand what, understand Jesse what you Jesse Jackson doing. had the conversation. Listen. He the one that called you what? African American. Yeah, check it out. So hold he gave you that term. Hold on a second, hold on a second. You, you, you're comparing. Y'all yeah, missing my point. You're comparing, Just the, listen. You, you're comparing the ability for us to communicate when we left the plantation and went north to <clears throat> our ability to communicate on a national level in 2010. No. Do you know how many people are going to see this tape right here? The ability to... Look, the world has changed. And we have the ability right now to form a national agenda. Yes, uh -huh. we have. We have the ability to do it, but we have yet to do it. But well, how, I'm not agreeing. I'm not now, now, listen, 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 listen. Here That's you go. True. That's true. How do we take the steps on doing that? Larry, go ahead. First of all, my, my point was that this is what we need to do. We need to begin to work on this because wars are fought in stages. Okay, so you have to have a strategy moving forward. You have to have the ability to recruit troops. You have to have the ability to have those troops have one vision. You understand? So we have to communicate with each other wherever we are, and we have to decide how we're going to move forward and as who we're going to move forward. You notice that when I tell you we never had this conversation, the media had this conversation. Jesse Jackson had a press conference with the media and had this conversation. Elijah Muhammad made pronouncements. Louis Farrakhan makes pronouncements. That's not this conversation because... What about the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey? What I'm saying to you, brother, is that... Did the message go out worldwide? Marcus Garvey was the 1920s. The 1920s, okay, is Marcus Garvey. What I'm saying to you, brother, is that when we talk about uh, uh, our people we can stand up individually and say our people and in our minds mean all black people excuse me <clears throat> in our minds mean all black people but in all black people's minds they're not thinking about all of us the same way we all about black all people aren't black people mixed in those black people is the negro you understand my, my contention what you calling the negro I control. I call the Negro as one who doesn't have knowledge of self. This is a, he was a in creation of the slave master to be a tool for him and a weapon against each other. That's the Negro to me. The black person is someone who has a knowledge of self can, and and recognizes what his enemy and who his enemy is and has a desire to rise above it. Can I ask you? on camera mm -hmm. in front of young blacks mm -hmm. right to think about this one second before you answer and to consider that when we differentiate amongst ourselves uh -huh. ne negro uh -huh. feel nigga, nigga, nigga feel nigga uh -huh. house nigga uh -huh. uh, real nigga uh -huh. Fake nigga. When we differentiate amongst ourselves, uh -huh. what we actually doing is assisting the enemy. Because hold on a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let him make us. Because because if I'm hearing you, mm -hmm. right? Not saying me now hearing you, but if I'm hearing you, and I may happen to be the type of individual whom you describe as negro, and I hear this, that's an assault on me, so now I'm looking at you like you're the. Wait a minute, what is this? What is this? You understand? So now I'm not telling you that we don't have individuals with problems. Are you asking me a question or are you telling no, me? No, I'm, I'm stating this, and, and here's going to be the question to you. I'm not telling you we don't have individuals well, with problems. You already asked one question. What I'm saying is when you make these distinctions amongst us, mm -hmm. can you see that that's kind of divisive? Mm -hmm. No, I don't see it as being divisive. I see it as 
as the white man would say, calling a spade a spade. That's 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 how I see it. All right, because by by me differentiating between what I consider a black person, and this is me. I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm speaking for me. All right. When I when when I when I speak on someone who is black, and when I speak on someone who is a Negro, I fully understand who the Negro is. All right. How? When when he brought our ancestors over here on them ships, in the literature, right? He clearly says, "We loaded the African on the ship. Once that African stepped foot on this land." The next generation were Negroes. Mm. When did that African become a Negro? He didn't become a Negro until he was indoctrinated uh. into... Hold up, let me That's finish. Right. He didn't become a Negro until he was shaved off from all knowledge of his past, right. all knowledge of his history, all knowledge of where he came from, and the only thing he knew was pick that cotton, pick that tobacco, Go here, go yonder, do this, do that. He accepts Jesus Christ, the white Jesus, as his Lord and Master. You understand what I'm saying? And he will fight you, and this Negro thinks that everything is going good right now. He thinks we made so much progress right now. He is correct. I agree. You understand? This is the Negro that we argue with on 125th Street <coughs> every day. So, the Negro is a mentality. There you go. It, it's, a, it's a mental state of mind, right? And I'm hoping that anybody who sees this, and give you a perfect example, my son's mother. I called her a Negro one day. She heard me have this conversation with somebody about what a Negro is, and I called her a Negro. She said, oh, she said, what's a Negro? And I was telling her what a Negro was, and she said, am I a Negro? I was like, yeah. You a Negro, but you can become a black person. Mm -hmm. You got to understand right. the era of your way. Right, there you go. You understand? You have to understand the era of your way. You have to understand the mentality of which you are dealing with. And, yo, know, that house nigga, field nigga mentality is prevalent today. Okay. Master house burned down. How's Negro going to, he going to run and get the water? Okay, Larry. I was speaking to you earlier, and we was touching on that topic somewhat. And you gave me your definition of what is a nigga. You said a nigga is what, Larry? Now, hold on a second. You didn't, never heard me say nigga. Right, but I know. You heard me say Negro. Right, but now I'm going to say nigga. Death to the Negro. Right, now I'm going. Now, hold on, hold on, Larry, hold on. <laughs> Sue Tex say death to the Negro because he's talking about the mind state. The mind he state. gave you the definition of what is a Negro, and I agree with Sue Tex 100%. We was made to be a Negro. When I say we, I'm talking about our people. We was made to be a Negro here in America because we were stripped of our names, our language, like he said, of everything. And we was brought up into the white man's way of thinking, of his culture. Right now, Larry, you got a white mentality right now inside of your subconsciousness. That, we all, got to fight, that we all got to fight to kill that Negro that's inside it, of our do, mind. Do you find credibility in the Willie Lynch letter in the making of a slave? No. No? Okay. There's a reason. Wow. No, no, wait, time out. No, hold up, Larry. No, hold wait, up. time out. There's I a reason. I want you to ask him no, that no, question hold again. Now, I'm, I'm, hold up, let, let me just say this. This is what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you, did Willie Lynch exist? Oh. Right. I'm asking you, do you find oh. call it, like, credibility in the Willie Lynch letter and the making of a slave? Do you find credibility? Sure. You find that's credible? Sure. Okay. Then. Now, before that's you go on, here's a question again. We talked about the term nigger, not negro. And you gave me your definition of what is a nigger. Break that down. Sue Tech broke down a negro, and then you can touch on the negro. But break that down. What is a nigger to your understanding? Stay tuned for part three, where Brother Larry gives you his definition, his understanding, or his term of the word nigger and what it means.